дорогие коллеги, приятно вас видеть здесь, в таком большом количестве, даже превышающем возможности нашей аудитории. У нас был сеанс великолепной живой хирургии, и в продолжении ее плавно перетекаем в лекционную секцию, в лекционную сессию. И э, я бы хотел вас, вам представить одного из хирургов, который сегодня демонстрировал вам свою филигранную технику. И э, тема его доклада э, прекрасно перекликается с той хирургией, которая была э, им проведена. Э, доктор Винченцо Царникола э, из э, Италии. Он э, прочтет нам лекцию на тему глубокая передняя послойная кератопластика, все разрывы э, дестеметки можно э, преодолеть, можно так сказать, да, а, то есть э, будет говорить нам о том, что это не проблема, что перфорации дестеметки э, не являются противопоказанием к успешному завершению э, глубокой послойной кератопластики что и было, собственно говоря, сегодня вам продемонстрировано в ходе операции. Пожалуйста, Винченцо, we want to welcome you. Thank you for coming to Moscow, and uh, we really looking forward for your lecture. Um, let me say that I feel so honored to speak in Moscow with all these people about this subject that is something that I strongly believe uh, since many years because people come in our office asking for DALC. Today the people know everything about the advantages of DALC comparing to PK and they want DALC and we cannot go out from our operating room and say sorry I got rapture and I did PK. They will think that we made wrong, and this is not true. But now the goal is we don't have to convert to PK ever. We have to fix the ruptures, because all the ruptures can be fixed. And believe me, I didn't intentionally break the Deshmet this morning. It happened, and I was so worried that I wasn't able to fix. But keep calm, and all the ruptures can be fixed. I don't know if this is for the slide. Yes. So this is the regular DALC we would like to do every day. Just refination, 400 micro. And then we use this special spatula and we go deeper and deeper until we feel the soft plane the spatula goes better that means that we are deep enough and on this time we can put our cannula the cannula has to be very close to the decimate that's the reason that OCT can help during this surgery and uh, at this point we can push the air in the stroma and we can get very good big bubble. If we are not sure about the bubble, we can do a bubble test. Just put a small bubble air in the anterior chamber, and you see that the air remain in periphery because the uh, shape of the deshmet is completely changed. You don't have any more the uh, concal uh, situation of the deshmet. But in this way, the air remaining in the periphery cannot go in the middle. So that's the moment that you can open the bubble. That's the original technique described by Anwar. With a knife, he cut the stroma, like you can see here in the schema. And at this point, the deshmet comes up. This is very dangerous maneuver. So I suggested to change this with this other approach. Put some visco on the bubble, use cataract knife, and goes inside from bottom to up. And you can see that the knife goes inside to the bubble. That's the schema that you can follow me better. 
the knife goes inside to the um, bubble, and you can just lose some bubble air, but the bubble, the big bubble, remain. So you can then go out from the bubble. You still have the bubble, but you have a connection with the outside now. And uh, at this point, you can go again inside of the bubble and put some visco and remove the air and progressively changing air with the visco. And at this point, open the bubble, become really very easy. Like you can see here, so you see the knife goes inside. Then we go inside with visco. We push some visco, the air goes out. And now we can cut the bubble very safely. Well, the problem is that is not always like this because the Deschmet membrane ruptures rate is from 4 to 39 percent because surgeon's expertise. But the PK conversion rate is the key point. If you look in the literature, PK conversion rates goes from 0 percent, so all the ruptures were fixed, to 60 percent. There are many doctors that one rupture, one conversion. That's not good now because we know that ruptures can be fixed. Let's speak about how can we fix the ruptures. We already published this data during World Corner Congress in 2015. And you can, sorry, all the videos you can see today, you can find in this cornea book. That's good because maybe you go home, you do not remember, and you can check the video that in cornea book you can find. Well, if, if you see the conversion rate, you can see that uh, the data shows that uh, there are at least two surgeons that has zero conversion since 15 years. We reviewed more than 1,000 cases, 908 patients, and look the results. We can say that uh, the Deschmet member ruptures, it's much more frequent in PD DALC than in D DALC. And macro ruptures are much more frequent in uh, D DALC than in PD DALC. What about the side of the ruptures? The side of the ruptures much more is in the periphery but sometimes can be in the center as well. But anyway, there is no reason to replacing an LT endothelium. That is the rule. We cannot change an LT endothelium for any reason. So the mo most frequent rupture is this kind of ruptures. See that we are cutting the stroma in the periphery and it's easy to break the deshmet. How can we fix this rupture? Well, just follow the rules. Complete the stromectomy and then suture the donor and only then put air in the anterior chamber. Because if you put air in the anterior chamber before you fix it, the, the donor, the rupture can enlarge and you don't want a large rupture. And this is the post-op. But sometimes, don't forget the head position in the post-op. The head position follows the same rules of uh, retinal detachment. When the surgeon of the uh, posterior part of the eye make a tamponation of the, of the rupture. So the position has to be uh, in this way for lateral rupture. So the air has to close the rupture. The position has to be in this way for the superior ruptures because we wanted the, the air close the uh, the rupture, and what about the inferior? The inferior, this is the position. I know that is uncomfortable, but to be uncomfortable for a few hours is much better than to be uncomfortable for the life because rejection of PK. Well, <laughs> sometimes you can have a very strange ruptures like this. Uh, th this is uh, a trephination too deep and see, 
So what can we, we do here? Mostly of surgeon try to decide to do PK. That's wrong. We can fix these ruptures. We just put some stitches in the perforated area, and then we do a PD dalk with a manual dissection, layer by layer. We remove all the stroma, and then we suture first the donor. That's the fundamental rule. And just at the end, when all the graft is already sutured, you take care of the part that uh, you had the perforation. And at the end, some air bubble can fix the rupture, and here is the post-op. Let's speak about the results. The results are that uh, we had 91 ruptures in our more than 1,000 cases. That means 8% of the cases that's so not so it's frequent eight percent is a nine number so 75 ruptures resulted repair one day post-op following this rule but uh, in uh, 16 cases we found a double chamber so we tried to analyze why double chamber because if you have a double chamber it's not because it occurs it's not raining it's not sun is because we did something wrong, which is the wrong. In 10 cases, we just indicate better the head position to patient, and we put another A bubble in anterior chamber. In three cases, we had to replace the sutures. That's very important, because if you do running sutures, you never know exactly if the graft is pushing homogeneous everywhere. So with the single stitches, if at the end of surgery you see that uh, the pressure of the graft to the recipient bed is not homogeneous, you can take out some stitches and put again. So I suggest you to use single stitch, but in three cases we had an untreatable double chamber. The untreatable double chamber was for a very important problem. The problem is the disparity of curvature between donor and recipient. I won't be much more, sh more clear now showing these last two patients. So the disparity that can occur, just to explain uh, easily to you, is that uh, the curvature of the recipient it's much more steeper, steeper than donor. For example, in a keratoglobus. Or the recipient is flatter than donor. For example, in a severe scar after an infection. Okay? Let's see these two cases that I believe are very interesting. Uh, this is a keratoglobus. You can see that uh, the curvature is completely different. And uh, you know that in keratoglobus, any PK will fail. So we cannot do PK in keratoglobus. So the surgery, it's not easy, but it's not terrible. Here is the, the first eye we did in these patients. Just remove the stroma, and you are deep enough, because keratoglobus, the, the, the deepness of the tissue is very, um, is very thin. And you can manage the disparity very well if you don't have any rupture. But look what can happen if you have a rupture. If you have a rupture, follow the schema. When you put the uh, flatter tissue, you, you will have some folds. And the folds can let the rupture open. So you have to fix the disparity. Otherwise, your double chamber becomes untreatable. This is the eye. You know that if you do PK here, it will become blind? Yes, everybody knows. So we have to do here <laughs> deep anterior lamella. But look what happened. When we were removing the stroma, we perforate. And then we perforate here too. What can we do? How can we manage this rupture? Well, we have always looked at retina surgeon. What they do when the retina is not attached 
with strong retraction, they cut everything. And we have to do the same here because we want to fix the disparity between donor and recipient. So this is the schema. We cut the endothelium, we save the endothelium, and then we, um, we put a graft that is a stroma of dark donor and self-endothelium. And I show you the surgery. So we cut it, the, all the endothelium, and then we, uh, we take care of, about the endothelium with some visco. We removed everything. We did uh, even an iridectomy in the periphery. Yeah. Then we prepared the, the graft removing the uh, endothelium and decimate. And we glue it with tissue call. It's a glue. We can glue the self endothelium with the dark allograft here. And now at this point, we have a, this special graft with the self endothelium. And this is the post op, one day post op. This is 40 days post op. And here is the pre and post op. So we fix it, even this <laughs> rupture. And let's move to the other disparity, like last case. So if you have a situation like this, where the rupture is in the recipient bed that is flatter than donor, you cannot put just bubble air in the tear chamber to fix. For example, this eye. He comes to us, we treated him with uh, uh, acyclovir, systemic acyclovir, and local steroids, and look after six months, so the infection resulted controlled. So we should move to surgery, and uh, which kind of surgery? Dark, only dark. Otherwise, the graft will fail. And uh, look at the surgery. It's nine millimeter trephination. We did a very good uh, stromectomy, but look, we perforate. So we put it the donor, and look the post-op. After nine days, he developed this terrible double chamber. This is terrible because the recipient bed is too tight. It's far away from the donor, and you cannot fix just putting air in the chamber. Because if you put air in the chamber, even if you put a big bubble of air in the anterior chamber, the disparity is not fixed, and the tissue will detach again. So you have to cut again. You don't need 360 degree cutting because it's not uh, steeper, it's flatter. So subtotal circular cut is enough. And uh, in this way, the schema will become this. And if we put air in anterior chamber, the uh, disparity can result fixed. I show you the surgery here. We just removed some stitch. We went inside and we cut the recipient bed. And through six hour, we put some air in into the chamber, and the rupture resulted fixed. This is the post op after sixty days, and this is the post op after one year. This is an infection, neovascularization, young patients. If you do PK, it will fail. So the, we started from here, the right therapy and the right surgery, and this eye is good a new time. So the, my message is take care about the disparity because the disparity can be really a cavallo di Troia, Troia horses of your surgery. Let me invite all of you to this uh, meeting in Italy, that now it will be an um, 18 meeting. It's uh, English language, will be the official language. You can have wet labs with the human eye, especially for young doctors that want to try to understand the surgery of uh, DMEC on DALC. And we even have uh, amazing speakers. And uh, on Friday night, we have uh, a very good party, but slide stop it. Thank you very much.
Может быть, есть вопросы доктора Сорникола, которые хотелось бы задать. У меня есть вопрос. Винченцо, I have a question for you. Um, I will speak in Russian and in English. Um, вопрос мой будет следующий. Uh, у нас есть определенный опыт uh, uh, глубокой послойной кератопластики. И по нашему мнению, одной из сложностей, когда мы тампонируем разрывы, дистометровые мембраны является то, что тампонада воздухом на фактичном глазу приводит к синдрому уридзавалия. У нас это бывало не так редко, как хотелось бы. Поэтому мой вопрос будет к доктору Сарниколе, как он пытается избежать этого, и, по-видимому, у него есть свой алгоритм, который позволяет это сделать. So, so our experience uh, in uh, DILK is that Uh, when we tamponade uh, the anterior chamber with air, which we need in some cases of rupture, so you get, uh, in some cases, not very infrequently, uh, Urizavalia syndrome. So maybe you have some uh, tricks to, uh, to tell us uh, how to avoid that, how to manage the air in fecicae, which is uh, a bit different from what we have in DMEC. Mostly of cases are uh, fake guy, mostly of cases. So the, the, the problem is real, very important. The rule is that uh, when we put air in anterior chamber, we have to follow the patients every two hours after surgery. Because if you have uh, um, a pupillary block, that is the, the reason of Uretz Zavalia, Uh, just wait half hour and then remove the area of anterior chamber and you won't have any uretz zavalia syndrome. The problem is that mostly of the time the surgeon uh, will check the patients the day after and you cannot let the patients with air in anterior chamber waiting for the day after because mostly of the time you will have a pupillary block and uretz zavalia syndrome. So the, the secret is that you have to follow the patients during the, the afternoon of surgery, every two hours before the night, and at night you have to remove the air. Don't let him pass the night with the, uh, full air in anterior chamber. And you, another uh, important suggestion is that you have to dilate the pupil, because if you dilate the pupil, the pupillary block become uh, uh, less frequent. Uh, one more question. Uh, oh, all the questions you want. Вопрос, значит, доктор Сарникола uh, рекомендует uh, расширять зрачок, uh, чтобы избежать зрачкового блока, uh, чего мы, um, по большому счету, всегда uh, боимся при кератоконусе, uh, в частности, вот, мой учитель, профессор Мороз, она никогда не назначала медриатики у пациентов с кератоконусов, и наоборот назначала им миотики, в том числе с целью предупреждения синдрома Ольдзавали. Поэтому здесь мы слышим совершенно противоположный подход, и я бы хотел об этом спросить Винченцо. So, some, some surgeons are very much concerned about uh, dilating the pupil in Uh, especially in keratoconus, because they do think that this uh, madriasis itself may induce uh, Uret Zavalia syndrome. Oh, this is wrong. Uh, so, uh, would you oh, this is wrong, absolutely. Uh, the Uret Zavalia uh, come for a severe ischemia of iris that is following of pupillary block. The pupillary block make the... Um, the movement of aqueous, not in anterior chamber, but back to back, and the pupilla, and the, the iris comes, uh, um, comes in front uh, together with the very high pressure of the eye. So this is the situation that determinate a severe ischemia of the iris that try to die and dying the, 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 
the tissue of iris make a dilation. That's the reason. But uh, please, don't be afraid about dilation. You should be afraid of pupillary block. That's the key point for Uritz Zavalia, not the medriasis. Yeah. Будут ли еще вопросы доктора Сарниколя? Спасибо большое. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.